Dream Center Church is a restoring place, a place where we make disciples of Christ, teach and train them to live as children of God, and to thrive into who He created them to be. We believe that this is the best time on earth to be alive, to experience the end-time harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Get ready to be renewed, recharged, and restored to go out and take the gospel to your world. How many of you have situations in front of you that seem impossible? If it is, raise your hand, let me see. Impossible situations that you seem to be facing. They told you this can't happen, this won't ever happen to you, this, this, this is what's going to happen to you, and you don't see any way out of it. Is that you? Brave your hand. <clears throat> In this world, there may be things that are impossible, but not with God. Nothing's impossible with God. And all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes in the God, where nothing's impossible. With God, nothing's impossible. Our initial interpretation of that is for God, nothing's impossible. But it said with God, nothing's impossible. If you're with him, nothing's impossible. And can I tell you, God is right in our midst. He's everywhere. He's with us. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us even before we were born. He has promises for us. He has visions for us. He has purpose for every one of us. And it's the enemy's desire to keep you from becoming who God created you to be. <clears throat> if he can keep you from hearing the word of God, he will. If you hear the word of God, he's going to try to convince you that it's not true. And if you believe that it is true, he's going to try to stop whatever you believe in God for. We do have a battle that we're in. Jesus said this is a war. We're in a, we're in a spiritual battle. <clears throat> Jesus was ministering in the 12th chapter of John. And he prayed, God, return the glory to me. To me. And once again, reveal your glory in me. And God says, I will, and I'll do it again. And the people heard it, heard God speak. Some of them thought it was thunder. <clears throat> Some of them said it was God, but they didn't understand what he said. And Jesus says, God did not do that for my benefit, but for yours, so that you would believe. And then he said this, everything in this world is about to change. And it will come to pass when I've been lifted up. In other words, when he goes to the cross, everything is going to change. We looked at last week, I think it's from Matthew uh, Jesus said that the, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of God suffers attacks, but those inspired by the truth will take up the kingdom and fight because we're in a battle. We can be passive, but being passive is, 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 is not... Uh, Aligning with God is aligning with the devil. <clears throat> if you don't speak out, you've spoken the other way. And you need to stand for truth. And you need to believe God. And you need to trust him to be there with you. There's some wild things that God has told us that seem to be impossible. But you know when God says it, it's no longer impossible. Because every word from God, every promise from God has a power within itself to bring it to pass when it's folded into a heart of faith who's willing to declare it. <clears throat> Anything that God tells us becomes possible. Amen. And you can read some things that he said and commissioned us to do as believers that seem to be impossible. Or seem to go against natural reasonings. And quite often, the things of God go against natural reasoning. For example, Jehoshaphat, when he found out that those three armies that were raided against them were going to come, they were aligning themselves up together to come against Israel. And they had the power to overtake them in the natural realm. 
And they understood that. And the, and the sentinels came and told Jehoshaphat, there's three armies out there. And they're getting, they're getting ready to come take us. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat declared a fast and came and brought everybody into the temple and began to praise God. He began to praise God before he began to ask him anything. Sometimes when you, and we said, we, we, we quote this when we had this confession that was written by the children at Bethel Church about praising God. It says this kind of, this kind of praise has the power to shut Satan's mouth. Amen. And before Amen. that, in the scripture where it came from, it says out of the mouth of babes, praise comes. And this kind of praise, the praise that comes from babies' mouths has the power to shut Satan's mouth. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, he'll speak to you. And he'll, he'll continue to speak to him as long as you let him. Sometimes you need to tell him to shut up. Come on, come on. <clears throat> sometimes the scripture says, not sometimes, but the scripture says, this kind of praise has a power to shut Satan's mouth. Amen. We all are spirit beings. Some of our spirits are alive and some of them are dead to God. That's why we need to be born again. When Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again, Nicodemus didn't understand. He said, how can I be born again? Am I supposed to go back in my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, Nicodemus, if you don't understand this, you're not going to understand anything. You're not, you're not going to really understand the kingdom. We're a three-part being. We're spirit, soul, and a body. We're a spirit being. That's who we are. Our soul is our minds and our will and our emotions, those things that change. And the Holy Spirit tells us when we come into his kingdom, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. <clears throat> renewing and changing your mind, your will, and your emotions. Amen. Your knowledge changes when you read the word of God. Come on, come on. You'll get knowledge from the world, but it's not God's word. And it'll infiltrate your spirit, man, in your soulless realm. And he won't have you doing good thinking. In fact, you'll be doing stinking thinking. And when you try to run the kingdom of God through the world system, understanding it, it's never going to go through. <clears throat> it won't. You won't understand it. You won't comprehend it. This is key. Listen up. You have to get out of your natural mind and get into your spirit, man. But let your mind be renewed. You know, when you get born again, your spirit man is instantly born again. It is now new. You, the old things have passed away. All things have become new. Just because you get, became new doesn't mean you know everything all of a sudden. In fact, you don't know much more you did than the time before, but now you are spiritually perceptive to the things of God. You're born again. You're now, your spirit's alive again to God, and now you can fellowship and come into communion with God in a greater way than ever because your spirit man is now alive. You had to be born again. And we find out about being born again from Romans 10, 9 and 10, among other things, but it says if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... <clears throat> I long for the day when we quit trying to just get people saved but start raising disciples of men on, and women. <clears throat> you can be saved and born again but not renew your mind and you just sit in a pew and not do anything the rest of your life but just be a dead Christian. But he wants you to renew your mind so you'll know the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Being born again and then renewing your mind. So when you get born again, your mind needs to be renewed. You didn't get it all. But when you turn to the Lord in, in, in repentance, Corinthians says, the veil's lifted and you can now see things you couldn't see before. Once you have a heart of repentance, once you turn to God with a changed heart, repent doesn't mean, I'm sorry. I got in trouble. I got slapped. No. Repent means, I'm sorry <clears throat> for my actions. And I'm going to change. A repentant heart is one who's, whose mind is now set to change and to turn towards God. Amen. Amen. No one can make you. No one can stop you from doing it. No one can make you believe. And the other thing, no one can keep you from believing God. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> believing God is a choice that you and I have in front of us to either believe God or not believe God. Every time we open this book, we ought to say, Lord, I'm going to read your word. And whatever you tell me, before I even read it, I'm going to believe you. Amen. Amen. 
don't look at what you read and decide what you're going to believe based on what it sounds like or what its reasoning looks like because you reject a lot of it because some of it doesn't make any sense unless you have a repentant heart. You turn to him in with a repentant attitude, willing to be taught, willing to forget the stuff you've been taught. That's not of God <clears throat> because the stuff you think you know about God that's not right, it'll distort everything else you try to learn about God. And I'll say this while I'm there. What, <clears throat> what you think you know about God, if you can't find it in the person of Jesus, you need to throw it away. Come on. What you think you know about God, if it can't be found in the person of Jesus, you need to put it away. Amen. You need to change it. Because if you've seen Jesus, he said you've seen the Father. The, the message I have today is God's called us to impossible things. Jesus did the impossible. But Jesus did the impossible, not for the sake of the impossible, but, but because of reaction to the relationship and fellowship he had with God. Amen. <clears throat> and then he walked out, not his own desires, but God's desires. Amen. So, we, we want to do miracle signs and wonders, but we shouldn't want to do that and not first seek our fellowship and our walk with God just like Jesus had. That, that, was, that was a preeminent thing of his life. Amen. Amen. Jesus was, you know, the word that became flesh. I don't fully understand all that. I don't need to understand it, but before Jesus of Nazareth came, he was the word of God that became flesh. Amen. And John, the Gospel of John in chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. That the Passion Translation calls the Word the living expression of God. The living expression. <clears throat> we express ourselves with our words. God expresses Himself with His words. Amen. And He expresses Himself through the living Word, Jesus, that came on this earth. What Jesus did was go proclaim God to an orphan world who didn't know that they had a father. Come on. Come oh, they were religious all right. Even the, the Pharisees and the legal, the religious ones, they thought they knew God. But Jesus says, you know, you don't believe me because you don't know God. If you knew, if you knew God and knew where I came from, you'd believe me. If you, if you, if you, if you believe Abraham you, or Moses, you'd believe me. But you don't because your heart's a heart. Your, your heart is hard. And you don't have ears to hear because you think you know. For example, that one guy that was, was, it was blind and Jesus healed him <clears throat> by spitting in the ground, putting mud on his eyes and telling him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. When he did what Jesus said, and that doesn't make any sense. You understand that? A blind man comes to Jesus and he decides to spit in the ground, make mud, and then put it in the men's eyes. And then tell him to go wash in a certain pool of Siloam. If you have a problem with your vision, you just can't go over there and near the pool of La Salome, spit in the ground, make mud, put your eyes in the wash, and think you're going to get healed. Any more than dipping in the River Jordan seven times, like Naaman did, would make you healed from leprosy. Come on. Unless God tells you to. <clears throat> Words enough. Words enough. It's what God directs us to do. But it don't make no sense. <laughs> even Naaman said, Wait a minute, I came all this way to see this prophet. He didn't even come out to see me. He sent Gehazi, his servant, out to see me. And he does tell me to go dip in this nasty river. Well, and the, his, his servant said, well, what, what, Naaman, what, if he'd ask you to do something easy to do it, why, what's, why don't you just do it? <clears throat> You've come all this way, why not? He almost reasons himself out of a healing. Come on, preacher, come on. God will tell you things about how to get your prayers out, and you reason them out. You won't, you won't walk in it. You have to believe him. God's never lied. <clears throat> he never wanted to lie. It's not part of the kingdom. In fact, one of the Ten Commandments, don't bear false witness, don't, don't lie, don't tell lies. The world out here, they're lying like dogs. They'll tell you one thing, turn around and tell you the next thing another. I mean, it is just one lie after the other, and they tell them so much, I think they even believe the lies they tell. And they're saying some things that are very obvious biologically that things can be changed. They cannot. Come on, come on, come on preacher. <laughs> and the, the scripture tells us 
in the last days, they'll be saying what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Well, golly, I mean, I can't imagine it could be any worse than this and not reach that point already. I mean, I think we're there. Come on, come on. What's going on last night? It's a sign of the times. <clears throat> and you can let your mind roll and think about the worst and you can imagine the whole world annihilating itself. And Jesus said, even when this stuff is going on, he says, rejoice. Rejoice. <laughs> Jesus, that don't make any sense. We're supposed to worry and fret. No, you're not supposed to worry and fret. We're not, we, don't, we, don't have, we don't have a right to worry or be afraid or fear. In fact, if we do it, we're disobeying what God says, and that's sin. sin. Come on, come on. It's, it's a sin to do what God says don't do. But it's also a sin to not do what he said to do. But if he tells you don't worry and you worry, that means you sin. Amen. And you probably have plenty of reasons to worry if you didn't have God on your side. In fact, without God, you, you probably should worry. But if you worry, do you understand that you're sending a message to God that you don't believe in? Brother Hagin says, I, he says, my mom and my grandma, they were champion, world champion warriors. And it drove, it drove his mother to a point where she got crazy. <clears throat> and when he first started casting out devils, he said, nah, I don't want none of this. I saw this going on with my mom. I don't want to do that. And God told him to do it anyway. We're called to believe God and not be afraid. Amen. You've Amen. heard me say it multiple times, but it's, I want to hear it again myself. In Revelations, it's talking about how awesome heaven's going to be. And there's no tears, there's no sorrow, there's no pain, there's no, there's no loss, there's no theft, there's no anger, there's no sin. But those that don't come into this kingdom, this is murderers, whoremongers, sexually perverted, thieves, liars, killers, will have their place in the lake of fire. But the first two things, the first two sins it mentions before it mentions all those I just mentioned are the fearful and the unbelieving. Wow, wow. They'll have a part in the lake of fire. <clears throat> come on, come on. You don't want to be unbelieving of God. In fact, you want to be believing God. Amen. Amen. What battles with your mind, in your mind, is what the world tells you. Is the world system. <clears throat> is this natural world system that that boxes you against what God said and what the world says. And Paul says, by the Holy Ghost, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. Amen. You're not going to do this if you don't renew your mind. And how are you going to renew your mind? By putting the Word of God in faith as truth in your heart. Hey, hey. In oh. fact, if you let him, he'll write his words in your heart. Oh, every day. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh, and I will write my name on them. They'll be my God, and I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. And I will write my laws in their heart. Hallelujah. That happens by faith. Come on, come on. All this happens by faith. You can read this whole book and not get a thing out of it if you don't believe it. You hear me? It doesn't do you any good to read through the Bible in, in a week or a month or whatever you want to do if you don't put anything in there in you. You might as well read Humpty Dumpty because come it ain't going to do you a bit of good if you don't open your heart to it and believe it Amen. and receive it as truth. Abraham believed God and he, he, he believed the promise that God gave him and he expected God to fulfill it. Amen. He believed the promise and he expected God to fulfill it. Amen. We need, this is a big part of what I'm trying to say. We need to believe God but we also need to expect him to fulfill his promise. Amen. Amen. Not believe him and then not see nothing. He wants us to believe unto salvation. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that means he's Lord of your life. In other words, we surrender. Je Jesus was, I I've been listening to John this week. He's getting ready to tell him, I I'm getting ready to go pay a price. And they don't understand what he's talking about. He said, if a grain of wheat doesn't fall into the ground and die, it won't produce anything. Come on. It'll just be one grain of wheat. In fact, you can keep it in the barn. You can keep it in the freezer forever. It can produce nothing until it dies <clears throat> and begins to break down in the earth and then it comes back and comes to life. As smart as all our scientists are, they can't do that. Come on, come on. 
They can tinker with all they want to tinker with, but they can't make a human. They can't make a male or a female. They can't change it. Come on. Every cell of your body has two Y's or an X and a Y. If they dig your bones up, I don't care what they did to your physical body. If they dig your bones up 200 years from now, they know exactly what you are because they'll look at who God created you to be. You can't change it. You can change equipment, but you can't change what God created. Amen. And you cannot stop the word of God from coming to pass. Come on, come on. Except in your own sphere of influence, your own life, when you don't believe it. Wow. See, Jesus went to his own hometown in Nazareth, and it says he there could there do no mighty way. He could there. It didn't say he was not willing to. Didn't say he couldn't. It didn't say he wasn't. It wasn't willing. It says he was not able. He could not do there any mighty works, and he marveled at their unbelief. Yet we see times when belief reached in beyond Jesus' comprehension of the situation at hand, like the woman with the issue of blood, when she touched his garment based upon what she heard, and she believed, and you better also note she confessed yes, with she her did. mouth, in fact, the Amplified says, she said continually, if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And as Jesus was walking to Jairus' house, this woman comes in illegally against Jewish customs and, and the man-made laws. She was not supposed to touch the hem, but she wasn't supposed to be in public, but she came and touched the hem of his garment because she said continually, if I touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Now, why would she say that? Because it's what she heard. She didn't dream it up out of the blue. Now, if she dreamed it out of the blue, it's because God spoke it to her. Now, God can speak things to you that you have no knowledge of in the Word of God, but if it is God, you'll find it in His Word. God can speak to you things you don't know, but if it's God, it'll be confirmed by His Word. If He can't confirm it by the Word, I'd, I'd put it aside. Early on in our walk with God, Karen and I were going to go in Italy, but we were going to go on a trip to see Brother Hagen in Richmond at the Richmond Christian Center. Somebody had a word for us and it delayed us from getting there. We got there and we said, well, we're a little bit late, sorry, but somebody had a prophetic word for us. He said, let me, can I, he said, Bishop said, can I, can I give you some advice? I said, of course. I mean, like, I'm like first grader. I mean, I, I, I don't know squat, right? He says, when somebody gives you a word from God, he said, put it on a shelf. Watch out for parking lot prophets. <clears throat> Watch out for people who come up and tell you they're a prophet. If they come up and tell you they're a prophet, they probably ain't. Come on, come on. You and I can all speak prophetically. If I pick up this word from God and begin to speak, let's say 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in tender green grasses. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. That is a prophetic word because I'm speaking for God. Amen. Does that make me a prophet? No. Does that make me? Does that mean I've been called to the office of a prophet? No. Could I be? Perhaps. But it would have to be because God gifted me to do that. In fact, Paul says, and, and, and covet these gifts, and particularly that you prophesy. And here we are in the 21st century thinking, well, you better watch out because them prophets, they're not real, not real. Well, in the last days, there's going to be false prophets. Yeah, but there's still going to be real ones. Come on, come on. You and I should be discerned between the two. Amen. But even Revelation says, even the testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. We can speak for God. Amen. I'm speaking for God today. With the best of my ability, I'm yielding myself to Him to speak through me to tell you things He showed me, things He wants you to see, things I still am learning because He wants us to succeed and have victory because He paid for it. If he paid for it, surely we should long for Jesus to get what he paid for. I hate for him to pay for something and never, nothing ever comes of it. That would be ridiculous. Well, I don't know if healing's for me. Why, why don't you just say this? If healing is what he paid for, and, and I don't know it, well, at least I ought to seek it just in case it was, right? I mean, you should take the positive side, not the negative side about what we're talking about. That woman somewhere heard something about this man, Jesus, and she must have heard that if you get in his presence and if you touch just his clothes, the power will come out of him and heal you. 
she, and she believed it. Now, let me tell you the situation she was in. She didn't have any other, she didn't have no gun, no other gunpowder left. This is all she had left. She had money. She spent it. She owned doctors, but she didn't get better. She got worse. Now she's getting sick, and now she's out of money. She can't go to the doctors. She weren't helping her anyway. <laughs> that don't work anymore. What's left to do for her is die. But then someone sent a word to her. And I guarantee the Holy Spirit was involved with this word to get to her so that her testimony could be a testimony of Jesus Christ for you and I, a prophetic word that if it happened for her, it would happen for me. Amen. Brother Hagin on his deathbed was sitting there reading and said, well, this Jesus turned around and said, woman, your faith has made you whole. And he said, well, my goodness, if her faith will make her whole, then my faith should make me whole. Amen. And if her faith should make her whole, then your faith, which comes from God, which should make you whole. Amen. Amen. You have the ability to have the faith of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is not what denomination you belong to. That's what I used to think. What faith are you? I'm a Methodist. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Protestant. I'm whatever. That ain't what it means. It's do you have the word of God in you as a power source of faith. Come on, come on. Faith is the substance. Faith is a manifestation of the things that we hope for, being the proof. Faith is the proof of things we do not see. Come on, come on. Faith perceives as real fact what's not yet been revealed to the sense realm perception. Faith in itself means you're believing in something you can't see. Come on, come on. Where does that faith come from? It comes from the Word of God. Faith uh, comes by hearing Him. But what kind of faith is it? It's the faith of God. God kind of faith. Hallelujah. The God kind of faith, it means it's God's faith. It means God has faith that he uses, and God walks by faith, and he, Jesus walks by faith. In fact, if you don't walk by faith, you don't please God. Come on, come on. And God said about Jesus, that's my son with whom I'm well pleased. If he, Woo. God was well Woo. pleased, that's because Jesus was well in faith. Come on, come on. He walked believing what he heard, or read about God. <clears throat> and if her faith would make her whole, your faith that you have by hearing that, you, don't, you, you can put faith in what the devil says, but that's a stupid thing to do. It'd be silly because you're going to get what you believe. Come on. You should believe what God says and see what God says come to pass in your life. Amen. So that's why we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. You just not take a second and just say, Jesus, you're Lord of my life. Tell him, you're, you are Lord of my life. You know what Lord of his life means? Whatever he tells you to do, you do. Does that mean that when he, he becomes Lord of your life that you're excited about what he tells you? No. Nah. A lot of times he's going to tell you to do stuff you don't want to do because of your flesh, because of your history of your thinking, the way you've been brought up, the way you've been living, even if you've been in a ditch and, and you've been changed by what you've been going through, you need to have, a, let's say you've been in the street for 10 years. I mean, in the street, drunk, broke, and crippled, in the dirt, muddy, never taking a bath. And God tells you something contrary that who you are, that you're a new creation in Christ. You look and say, well, I ain't a new creation in Christ. I'm still stuck where I am. If you believe that, that's where you're going to stay. Come on, come on. But if you allow him to change your way of thinking Come on. and you begin to think and see yourself who God says you are, Woo. as a man thinketh, so is he. Amen. You know that you're, you're going to have to think about what God said before it comes to pass in your life. You're going to have to meditate on it. Come on. Come on. That woman had some time to think about it as she walked and found her way to Jesus. She was trying to make her way to him. And as she went, she says, if I, get, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. If I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. If I touch the hem of his garment, I shall. And when she touched him of his garment, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Amen. However, Jesus, knowing in himself that power went out, said, who touched me? Now think about that. He said, who touched me? And he's walking through a crowd. I don't know if you've ever been like me and been in a bar where you had to, you had to watch your wallet when you walk through because you're pressing against people all over you. And you're just trying to get through the crowd. And it's overcrowded place like the bars I used to have. And I would go from cash register to cash register grabbing cash and putting big wads of cash in my pocket. And I'd walk like this to the next one to get it. And I'm walking through a crowd and I'm mashed up against people. 
And who touched me? Probably everybody I got close to was touching me. And Jesus who touched me and his disciples only saw what they saw. He says, who, who, who touched you? Everybody's pressing against you. He said, no, no, no. Someone has pulled power from me. A lot of people are touching him. A lot of people are touched him, but only one person pulled power out of him. Why? Because of what she believed. Hallelujah. He's God in the flesh. He only knew what he saw or what God revealed to him. He didn't know everything because he was God, because he didn't live on the earth as God. He lived as God in the flesh as a man. <clears throat> Let me just say this one more time. He is 100% God. Amen. But when he came into this earth, he lived as a man. He took on flesh. The thing that he was different from him and you and I was that he would, had no sin when he came here. He was pure and he stayed pure. He had no sin. In fact, he had nothing that the devil could grab a hold of and get him. Jesus said, come on, let's go. Satan's coming to get me. I think it's John 14. He says, but he can't get me. He ain't got nothing on me. He ain't got nothing on me. And that way of thinking is pretty good because if you allow God to renew your mind of the fact that he, Jesus became sin, that you would become the righteousness of God when there's no sin on you, you say, Satan ain't got no right to be on me either. He can't touch me. He can't keep me in the poverty. He can't keep me sick. He can't keep me. He can't mess with my eyesight. He can't mess with my heart. He can't mess with anything with me because he has nothing on me. And the devil will go, yeah, I didn't remember what you did. Remember what you did. And, and he'll drag your past up that has been severed from you. And you turn around and go pick it up again, drag it with you again. And you'll disqualify yourself from becoming who God says you are because what the devil lies to you, just like he did to Eve in the garden. Did God say that? She said, oh, yes, what God said. He said, no, nah, you're not going to die. He's lying, bald-faced lying. You'll be like God. Well, they were already like God. They were made in his image and his likeness. But because of the Satan came to them to deceive them, they were tricked, deceived into believing what the Satan said instead of what God said. That's not a good place to be. Because if you believe the devil, you open the door to him and all of his imps. If you open your heart, to, if you believe God, you open your heart to God and everything he says. Well, what does he say? You need to find out what he says. I guarantee you, for those of you who raised your hand with an impossible situation here today, there's a word for God that answers that. Amen. Amen. And I'll give you a general one. With God, nothing's impossible. If you can believe God, nothing is impossible. With God. Nothing's impossible. This woman, it was impossible for her to be healed. But God sent his word and healed her. Fools, because even if, even if you bring these things on yourself, Psalms 107 says, fools, fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, they're afflicted. Because of their sins, they become afflicted. They draw near the gates of death. They can't even eat any meat. They can't do anything. Then they cry to the Lord in their trouble. And God didn't say, well, you made your bed, you got to lie in it. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction in the pit. Oh, that men would praise God for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Amen. Oh, Amen. that men would praise God for his goodness. Oh, God, you're good. You have wonderful works to the children. Yes. What is man that you're mindful of him? Why, why are you infatuated with Adam, us? Why are you infatuated with us? Yet what honor and glory you've given to them, what dominion and authority you've given to them. Wow. You have given the sons of Adam authority over all the work of your hands. Wow. They are wow. your image bearers, even in their broken state. Wow. So good. Probably one of the biggest reasons you fail to believe God is because you don't believe how much he loves you. Come on. Come on, preacher. I'm, Come preaching, on. I'm preaching to the choir. The devil will tell you God doesn't love you. That's a lie. We know this. Billy Graham didn't write it, but he sure did say it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. God told that to Nicodemus. For God so loved the world that he sent me, his son, to pay the price. 
Unless you become like that grain of wheat where you die to yourself, you'll never reach your potential. Come on, come on. That's a good word. All right, God. You're Lord of my life. From this day forth, I'll do what you tell me to do. Amen. Amen. They'll probably tell you to get up and go to work the next day like you did the day before. But be different than when you get there. And how you... How you steward where you are has everything to do with your tomorrow. How you steward the job you have has everything to do with the promotion that would come your way. Yes. Yes. We're in this world, but we're not of it. But don't oh. think, well, I'm going to serve God. I'm just gonna, he's just going to beat my knees. I'm going to stay home and just watch TV. No, you, you, you're going to stay home and be broke. Come on. You can read Proverbs. They'll tell you that. They'll talk to you about that in a minute. Come on. Come on. Wise people are builders. They build Families, businesses, and enterprises. And through the revelation insight, they prosper. Amen. God's a builder. Yes. You don't think so? You know he's not creating any more cows or any more dogs. They, once he put them in, they've been creating. And they have been procreating ever since. The trees, the everything. You just leave something alone, it's going to grow something in it. And if, you just, if we just walk out of downtown Charlotte, 100 years from now, it'll be covered with green. You probably can't find it. Come on. Why? Because God says as long as there's seed, as long as earth remains, seed time and harvest will not. And you and I and everything on this earth is a product of a seed. Amen. Amen. Every living thing is a product of a seed. And so are you and I. We're a product of seeds. Hallelujah. Because God spoke it into existence. Amen. Now you have the right, you have a legal right to reject God's word. You don't have a moral right, but he ain't going to make you believe him. Come on. And if you choose not to believe him, or you get talked out of believing him, probably ain't much going to happen in your life that's any good. And you may even have good things happen in your life, but if you're not serving God, it ain't going to do you one bit of good. One bit of good. What good would it do you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? What, how stupid would that be? And the older you get, the more, the more that makes sense. I'll tell you that. And when you're young, you think, well, I can go just do this forever. Then one day you realize, man, I'm not going to be here forever. And what have I done with what I've been given? What, what have I done with what, this life that God's given me? You, you know, you, you will give an account for what you did. Amen. Yeah, but you know, brother, no, when we get born again, we don't have to go to the throne of judgment. That's right, because we judge ourselves as sinners. But we will go talk to Jesus about it. Come and on. it's called the Bama Seat of Christ. He will, he will ask you, and he will, tell, and he will ask, and you will tell him what you did with what he gave you. Then you say, well, he didn't give me nothing. Uh, did you breathe today? Did, did you get up and walk today? Uh, that was life God gave you, and what could you do with it? You can wow. sit around and feel sorry for yourself, and you can get up and go do something. Don't tell me what you can't do. Come on, preacher, come on. Tell yourself what God says you can do. <clears throat> Because your flesh will talk you out of anything that would cause you discomfort to get you to success or to the glory of God. Mm. <laughs> John, the first chapter says, and, uh, as many as receive him, God gives them the power to become who they truly are, who they truly are, the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you what God said in his word. And it paints a picture for us to know that, man, God wants us to have an awesome life. He, he's created for us. Uh, in fact, Romans, I mean, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 says, live in the good life. This is the Amplified. This good life that God prepared and pre-planned ahead of time for us to live. Living the good life that God prearranged and planned and made ready for us to live. There is a plan that God has for your life that's good. And he wants you to live it. Amen. But you're not going to live in it if you don't believe him. Unless it falls on you like ripe cherries off the tree, but it may not happen that way. Come on, come on. Sitting around just waiting for something to happen. It'd be like that woman who, who, who was, had the issue of blood. She said, well, I've heard of that Jesus guy, but I guess if God wants me to be healed, he'll send him to my house. Well, she died, and we wouldn't be talking about her today. Why are we talking about it? Because she got up from where she was in the midst of her situation against impossible odds and went to touch a man who was filled with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all the oppressed of the devil, and she believed it. 
and healing came to her. And Jesus said, daughter, your faith, not me, not my power, but your faith made your heart. Your faith tapped into this power because I bumped into 2,000 people today and they didn't get nothing because they had no expectation. There's a good man. They bump into him and there they are standing with the healing power of God consuming this man, Jesus. And yet people couldn't pull from him. They had eyes, but they could not see. That he had ears to hear, but they couldn't hear. And their heart was hard. Less than any time, Jesus said, they see with their eyes. They hear with their ears and they understand with their hearts and then they'll be converted and then I can heal them because yeah, unless, yeah. unless they see and hear and understand with their hearts, I can't do much for them. God may move sovereignly in our ignorance. He didn't promise to do it. So if he doesn't do it, he's not broken his word. If he does it, it is such his grace. And when you're a baby Christian, you'll get a whole lot more done without much effort. But eventually, God will expect, expect you to stand up and be mature and walk in faith for yourself. Brother Hagin tells a story about his son, Ken Jr., who got sick one time for 30. He said, Mama and Grandma, I call Papa. He'll, he'll, he'll pray for me and I'll be healed. And, and he did, until his grandmother finally broke down and called, he did it. But the Lord told Brother Hagin, he said, Now, you're gonna, he's going to have to stand on his own, own one day. So he went back and said, All right, son, this is it. You have to start believing God for yourself. Amen. There was something he was fighting. It had something to do with an ear infection. He said, let's go pray. And so he looked, his, he, they both knelt down to pray on his son. And he said, I'm not doing it. I ain't got no skin in this game now. He said, I, I'm not going to carry a lick. You pray Amen. for yourself. I'll agree with you, but you're going to have to do it yourself. Don't look oh. to me. And quit looking to man for your answer. Look to God. Amen. God will send men and women in your life to help you learn, to train you, teach you. At some point in time, you're going to have to do it for yourself. Amen. Amen. I mean, we all expect babies to have to change their pants and, and, and feed them and do all that stuff. But at some point in time, they're supposed to expect to do some of that themselves. Amen. Right? I mean, aren't we supposed to grow up? Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Come on. We're supposed to be who God says we are. We need to believe what God says we say we would do. These things that God's called us to are true. And they're beyond our comprehension. Natural understanding. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized will be saved. He that believeth not will be damned. What are you preaching? What God said, the truth. Amen. Amen. You don't, we don't have to convince anybody. We're supposed to go proclaim truth. If people hear it and believe it and get baptized, they'll be saved. If they don't believe it, they'll be damned. But the ones that do believe and get baptized, these signs would follow them. In my name, they'll cast out devils. Amen. You're not going to cast out any devils until you know that there are devils and that you have the authority to cast them out. Come on, come on. <laughs> You've run into crazy people before and you thought it was just them. It's probably a demon. But if you didn't have knowledge of it, you can do what you want. But that demon might just tear you up like he did the seven sons of Sceva. Come on, come on. They said, we cast you out demons in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. And that demon said, well... Paul, I know, and Jesus knew, but who in the world are you? Smack them, strip them seven brothers naked, they ran out of the house. Why? Because they didn't have knowledge of the truth. Come on, come on. They knew some truth, but not enough to do that. And these disciples who had been commissioned by Jesus to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse lepers, cast out devils who had been out in the field before, probably the most skilled demon casters the world's ever seen. <clears throat> and yet at one point in time, they come to this son of a father who had a demon and they said, Jesus, we could not cast him out. And Jesus said, this kind comes out by nothing but by prayer and fast. Well, Jesus, you didn't go pray and fast before you cast him out. No, it was his lifestyle. He always was with the father. Doesn't mean he always knelt down in the altar in the synagogue. I mean, he's talking to God wherever he was. Oh, God, he would pull on. apart and go spend time with him. He would go to that secret place. It's not a secret place that God doesn't want you to know about. It's want you, it's a, he wants you to come to the secret place. Psalms 25 says there is a private place reserved for the lovers of God who sit near him and receive revelation secrets 
of his promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And he can say to the Lord, he's my refuge. This person who's in that secret place, who himself goes into that secret place, will say, you're my refuge, you're my fortress, you're my God, in you I trust. Wow. Most of the time, my secret place is in my chair in my office at home, looking out the window, talking to God, rem reminding him of what he said, reminding me of what he said. Come on, come on. God, this is a private place reserved for us lovers of God where we receive revelation. We sit near you on purpose. He's always there. But when you don't are not conscious of him, you think you're alone. And then you go looking for God, but he's always right here with us. All we have to do is turn to him and know that he's there. I mean, Jesus was praying, God, I'm glad that you always hear me when I pray. And I'm not praying this for my benefit, but so they'll understand. Lazarus, come for. Do you know that the whole time he's there with Mary and Martha talking about Lazarus, he's listening to the Father? Amen. His antenna is always up. He's always listening. We pray, shut the antenna down, put the book aside, and go out and live our life. And we forget that we're having to walk with God. And that secret place can go with us wherever we go. And we may be in the midst of people and we can just turn to the secret place and say, God, what am I supposed to do in this situation? And he will answer you. Because he said, if you call upon him, he'll answer you and he'll show you great mighty things you don't know. Yes, he's called us to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and cleanse lepers. But it ain't going to happen unless we spend time with him. Amen. Unless we Amen. learn to live in the Father and have the Father live in us. Mm. To the point, if you heard me often say, because my, my first intent was to come up here and, uh, today and talk about John 14. And in, in that John 14, he says in John 14, 12, and he says before that, Philip, don't you believe I'm in the Father and the Father's living in me? The words I speak are not my own, but they come from my Father who lives in me, who lives in me, who performs these miracles, signs, and wonders through me. Don't you believe that I'm living in him and he's living in me? Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How can you say, show us a Father? And there's no way to come to the Father except through me. But from now on, you've known him and you've seen him. And Philip said, just show us a father. Philip, how long have I been with you? If you've seen me, you've seen God. Amen. Why is that? Because he's so yielded to God that he is God's representative on this earth. He's not got his own agenda. He's only doing and saying and going at the direction of his father. Amen. If the guy didn't tell him to do it, he ain't doing it. When he's, I think it's, I mean, it's in John, I'll think of the chapter in a minute. Maybe it's six. He, he, he come, he's in the temple teaching and they bring a woman who'd been caught in the act of adultery and they throw him at his feet. And they, they're trying to trick him. They're trying to catch him with his own words. Master, teacher. Moses' law says we're supposed to stone this woman because she's caught in the act of adultery. Well, that's partially true. They're supposed to bring both people. They didn't. They only brought her. Religious bigots. What do you say? Jesus doesn't answer. Just stoops down and scribbling in the sand. I really believe. I don't know if that's what he was doing at the time, but I know one thing. He's listening Amen. to God. Because he says, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. What he's getting ready to say or do, that's what he got from God, not what he conjured up himself. Come on, come on. Because God's witty and God's, and God's wise and he's crafty. And he stands up and goes, all right. That's what Moses said. It's all right. The first of the, the, whoever is without sin in, in the Passion Translation says, whoever has not had an evil thought cast the first stone. Then he squatted down again, began to scribble. Said the word of God. In other words, God spoke to those religious people through the flesh of Jesus of Nazareth. A prophetic word. 
and they begin to leave, the oldest first, down to the youngest. Like I always say, you don't get to be old, be no fool. Come on, come on. The young foolish ones took him longer to get it, but those old ones said, well, <laughs> I can't throw a stone. Got it right away. And, and they all are gone, and then he looks at her and says, where, is your, where are your accusers? Is there anyone here left to condemn you? Now, what was the condition of condemning? You never sinned, never had an evil thought. The only one that could have had an evil thought, no, the only one who was without sin, without evil thoughts, was Jesus himself. Amen. She says, there are, there, there are none to condemn me. He goes, neither do I. In other words, I could condemn you, but I don't. Thank you, Jesus. Go Send them. God cut covenant with us before he cut, gave us the law. His, his promises, his love for us is greater than the law. Come on. And if you get hung up in the law, you'll miss the love part and the covenant part. And how are you going to act when you come into this kingdom? You're going to listen to what he said do. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Amen. Amen. Which tells me if you don't love him, you probably won't keep his commands. Right? Yes. He's getting ready to tell the disciples in John 14, 12 that if you, if you believe on me, then the miracles, signs, and wonders I just talked about that I've been doing, you are doing greater works than me because I go to be with my father. Back up once again. Philip, don't you believe that I'm living in the father and the Father is living in me. The words I speak unto you, not my own, but they come from my Father who lives in me, who performs these miracles, signs, and wonders through me. Don't you believe I'm living in him? He's living in me. Don't you believe that? And if you believe me, that God's living in me, and all that I tell you, if you believe what I say, and you follow my commands, you'll walk where I'm walking. You won't do it on your own accord, or by your own power, or your might, but by the Spirit. He says, and, and don't, he says, if you believe, he says, I tell you this, timeless truth, the person, not the collective group, but any one person who believes in me will do the same miracles that I do in greater works because I'm going to be my Father. Hallelujah. And whatsoever you shall ask, that the Father will do, that the Father may be glorified, the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Thank you, Jesus. If you love me, Keep my commands. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another comforter to abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him because he's been with you in me. And you've been walking with him. But he's going to live in you. I would even say that he came upon them for a season when he went and he sent them to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and cleanse the But he's going to be different. He's going to live inside of you. Amen. Until my blood is shed, you're still carrying your sin. But once my blood is shed, and I become sin to you, Jesus is basically telling them, once I become sin, you'll be the righteousness of God. And now the Holy Spirit can come and live in you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Tommy Tyson asked me this probably back in 1994 or 95 because we're believing. We still believe for big things. Are you willing to give up all that to serve him? I'm like, well, I don't think I have to. I think the question is, do you understand that that's a benefit from this relationship? you have with God. Sometimes we want the benefit without the relationship. Wow, wow. Sometimes we don't know the significance of our fellowship with God to the point we just seek his hand and not his face. There's nothing wrong with seeking his hand for the things that we go through, the troubles that we face because Jesus ministered to people who were in trouble and all they could think about was getting free from the affliction they were under. But he always tried to bring them into relationship with the Father. God loves us so much, 
He's freed us from sickness, disease, torment, Amen. addictions, poverty, the curse. Thank you, Jesus. But he longs to live with us and in us in that sacred place. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you believe I'm living in the Father and the Father's living in me? I tell you this time is truth. The only way he did these miracle signs and wonders was because the Father was living with him, in him, excuse me, living in him. And he said, and if you believe on me and you allow this Holy Spirit to come live in you and you fellowship with God, it'll change the world. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. Jesus said, this is a war. And if you're not with me, you're against me. And if you're not gathering up the spoils by healing the sick, raising the dead, cast out devils in place numbers, you'll be scattered. He calls you to a place of impossibility. But the only way to that place of impossibility is walking with God. And the devil will do anything he can from, from, from allow, he will do anything he can to keep you from becoming one with God. He'll tell you lies about what God says. He'll tell you lies about who God said you are, about who he says you are. Don't listen to him. Because all he's trying to do is railroad you off from the path God's called you to, to be a disciple and be just like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus says, all, this is up here on our wall. Matthew 28, he's raised from the dead. <laughs> they didn't believe it at first. But he shows himself alive for 40 days. <clears throat> and you see it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you also see it in the book of Acts. This last moment, Jesus, with him. each one had a little bit more to share than the other did about this last commission he gave them before his ascension into heaven. And when he went up, they just looked up and they until they're looking at nothing. And the angels are standing. They said, what are you looking at? This same Jesus who just left will be the same way he comes back. Hallelujah. Now you go do what he said. This one says, all the, Jesus is speaking to them. All the authority in the universe has been given to me. Amen. Do you know how big that is? I don't care if there's other planets or other people living or other kind of beings anywhere in this whole created universe. They're under his authority. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Those that he's commissioned and those who are legally here. Satan and his, and his demon force and all of his fallen principalities and powers are beneath his feet and they are working illegally against the kingdom realm of God. Come on. Come on. Thanks be unto God who always calls us to trump. But regardless of, and I don't know who they all are and what they all are. It is even the counsel of God. I don't fully understand it, but I know one thing. God is the top and he's exalted Jesus higher than any name, principality, power, authority. Woo, hallelujah. All of it, hallelujah. regardless of how big this universe is and what's in it. He's king of it all. He's king oh. of it all. He says all the authority, both in heaven and in earth, in the heavenly realm and in this universe been given to me. Amen. All the authority. Now you take this authority I have, I give it to you to go and to preach the gospel to all creatures and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to faithfully follow every command I've ever given you. Every command he gave the disciples, he said, go tell everybody these same demands, these commands I've given you, go do, tell them to do it too. Whatever he told the disciples to do is our, is our come on, come on. command because we are disciples of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. One of them was heal the sick, raise the dead, Woo. cast out devils, cleanse Woo. lepers. Do you know that that's important to God? Yes. It's a huge part of his ministry. Even here when people weren't going to keep it. He shares his word for all to hear. And we can all hear. Amen. What Amen. you do with what you hear has everything to do with what comes back to you. Oh, that's big. Come on. Be careful Come on. what you're listening to. 
Jesus says, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear has everything to do with what comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. It's our job. It's our job to believe God. Amen. Deuteronomy 28. If you would hearken diligently, hearken diligently, if you would, with great effort, diligently hear from God, mm. give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, then all these blessings will come upon you. That is a forever truth. Wow. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. If you said it, it's said forever. If I would hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord my God to keep ear, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, then all his blessings would come upon me and overtake me. Blessed I'll be in the city, blessed I'll be in this field. Blessed coming in, blessed going out. Blessed be the fruit of my body, the increase of my kind, the flock of my sheep. Everything in my life and in my dominion and my authority is blessed. Because wow. what? Wow. With all diligence, I strove to hear from God. And I kept his statutes and did what he said. Listen and obey. And what happens? God says he had protection around you to keep you. And the devil can't get to you. And he can't keep things on you. Come on. We're free. We're free. Well, before we go. We're going to curse cancer. That's one of the things that I particularly hate. I don't know anybody that likes it. I think it is of the devil. It's not from God. When my brother died, I, I, I was at this sermon, I usually say this, just to those you haven't heard before, when I, I spoke at his, his funeral at my, uh, my home church, First Methodist in Hopwood, I said, my brother died. Because the thief, Satan, came to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more than more than enough. Amen. This was not God trying to get glory to himself. He did not need my brother in heaven. My brother's better off in heaven than he is here. All of us are better off in heaven than we are here. But don't go until your work's done, okay? Come on, come on. But he's in heaven, but it was not because God needed another angel in heaven. Or some of these silly things we've been told. No, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. I said, that's not God. This is not God's will for him. And the rest of my life, I will say it. And in the, in the same breath, I will curse cancer. So if you have cancer in your body, or someone in your family has cancer, or you know someone has cancer, stand to your feet. If you have cancer. James, you got those names? Like I sent you by text. Okay, all right. If you don't, you, you got it, but you pray. You call the list I have named. I, I gave half of them to Jamie to call out in the mornings when I call these other names out. But we're going to speak to cancer in people's bodies. Jesus said, if you said to the mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, you don't doubt in your heart, but would you believe that what you say will come to pass, you would have what you say. We're going to believe in our heart before we declare it that when we curse cancer, it's going to die. Well, who do you think you are? Disciple of Jesus, child of God, a warrior for his kingdom. You got him? All right. We're going to speak to the cancer in the body. We're going to tell it to die. Then after that, we're going, to, we're going to declare healing for whatever else you have. If you have anything you want to be prayed for physically, mentally, addictively, stand to your feet. And if you're listening uh, online, stand to your feet unless you're driving the car and stand up on the inside. Amen. We're going to declare God's truth. It will come to pass because we believe it. People say, well, I, I feel like I'm lying when I say those things. Well, how can you lie if you say what God says? How can you lie if you declare the God's truth? So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority given to us, Jesus said, because our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that's the true source of our authority. We curse cancer in the physical bodies of the people's names that we call out right now. Right now, you call your name out or whoever you're standing for. I got a name. I got a few names to call. Jamie will call some for me. Caroline, Mary, Wesley, Jill, Elaine, Terry. Uh-oh, Jamie, I'm calling yours. Sorry. <laughs> Maureen, Kathy, Natalie, Sam, Don, Taylor. Call your names out. 
Allie, Adora, RM, James, Phil, and Lee. Cancer in these bodies, we're speaking to you. And in the, name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you cancer cells to die in Jesus' name. Cease and desist your maneuvers and come out of their bodies right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command you to die. As Jesus spoke to a fig tree that died, as he spoke to the wind, the waves, and to a fever that was on Peter's mother-in-law, he told us to be like him, and we are. We were created in his image and his likeness. We command you cancer to die. If this cancer, however, is not physiological, then it's demonic. We command, Jesus told us to cast out devils. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you foul unclean spirits of cancer. We command you, loose them and let them go. In fact, we speak to every demon that's attached itself to anybody in this room or in the sound of my voice online. We command you, loose them and let them go. We have authority over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And at our command, you have to go. Somebody so we command you to go in Jesus' name. Oh, and if there's, right any, now, if there's any cancer cells in the oh, sound of our voice, Lord. unknown, undetected, we don't even know it's in there. We may not even be standing, but we're speaking to any cancer cell within the sound of my voice. We command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to die oh. and come out of their bodies. You're not the will of God. If you are demonic, loose them and let them go. And then for every other sickness, if there's anything else you want to be prayed for, this is now your time. From the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet, every cell, every tissue, every fiber, every organ, your nervous system, your bone structure, your uh, mental capacity, oppression, depression, mental uh, issues, any kind of tight uh, bands around our head, anything that's holding us in bondage, any kind of uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, any kind of mind issues. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And he restores our soul, which is our mind and the will and emotions. I speak the peace of God to you, that we have the mind of Christ. We have the physical healing that God has declared for us. It's ours. It belongs to us. And we declare it over you now in Jesus' name. That which we have, the name of Jesus, we give to you. Be healed from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet. Every cell, every tissue, every fiber of your being, alive with the life of God, created, uh, operating in the, in the perfection that God created to function in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive that. Receive that in Jesus' name. Eyes, hearts, blood, any kind of any kind of abnormality. Thank God we're healed. Not trying to get healed. We're not trying to be healed. We are healed. First Peter 2, 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we dead to sin should live in the righteousness by whose stripes we were past in sin. And Isaiah says, who has believed our report and to whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed? It's revealed to those who believe. Hang on, don't leave yet. Stand still. Don't walk around, please. One more thing before we go. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today's the day. Amen. Jesus came, died for your sins and my sins that we might be free from the law of sin and death. When we come to the kingdom of God, God delivers us from the authority of darkness and transits into the kingdom of his dear son. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then are you saved. For with the heart men believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. And he also said, once we're born again, if we ask him, he would fill us with his Holy Spirit. So we're going to pray this out loud. I'm going to declare it, and you repeat it after me. If you want to come into the kingdom and you'd be crazy not to, why would you live in the kingdom of darkness that loses and, and is causing us loss now instead of coming to the kingdom where we have victory? Amen. Amen. Repeat this prayer after me. Believers alike today, Father God, Father God I've, heard your gospel truth. I've heard your gospel truth. I declare today, I declare today Jesus, is Lord of my life. Jesus is Lord of my life. From this day forth, He's my king. He's my king. I, believe I believe in my heart that Father God, you raised him from the dead. Father God, you raised him from the dead. And according to your word, according to your word and my confession of faith, my confession of faith I'm, now saved. I'm now saved. Now take my life, take my life. And, have it, and have it and lead me and guide me into your perfect plan. You also said, you also said that if I ask you, I ask you, you would fill me, you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit. 
So fill me, Father, to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. And I'll receive him now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Do you understand the open door that's been given to us? My goodness. That's a good place to shout for joy. Amen. Well, stand to your feet. And we're going to put the tables together, right, Jamie? I need all well able bodied men and women to help us put some tables and chairs back together so we can serve you lunch. Amen? Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Jamie, who's in charge for them to follow? Uh, is Robert or uh, would, Roscoe and you ask you help them sort of decide I mean lead them to do that all right God bless you have a great Sunday look forward to having lunch with you thank you for being here with us on the voice of healing when you're in Charlotte North Carolina join us for our 10 a.m. Sunday morning service our website restoringplace.org has all the details on how to find us. While you're on our site, check out ways you can volunteer at the Dream Center. Need someone to answer questions about us or pray with you 24-7? Call our prayer line at 704-246-4595.